we've got this great equipment from Bailey. We've got a really cool project that's going to test each and every piece of equipment. And we're going to look at the pros and cons of each machine to make a whole bunch of noise. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to go into the fabrication of the door top for our Roadster pickup project using the Pull Max, Yoder, the Chicago Nomadic Planishing Hammer, Erco Kick Shrinkers, Chicago Brake. It's going to be the same process, just follow along. I'll talk about the equipment a little bit as we go. If you remember, our door top, this section right here, we're going to make it. I've got my blank cut out. Take this over to the brake and bend it at the angle we need. Uh, we're going to be using this Chicago finger brake. This is a 1985 Chicago brake. Advantages of it, I would think, are the strength, because it'll do up to 14 gauge. And then we can also, in smaller areas, do eighth inch plate. The uh, only drawback to these apron brakes is your bend coming over. You're limited to what you can do. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can remove all these fingers and put a bar in there that I've made that has a radius so you can do a radius break. But obviously you can see with all these wing nuts, it's quite a bit of time to set it up to do a radius. I get my angle bent uh, at 71 degrees. The one disadvantage of breaking long pieces on a finger break is if the fingers are all jagged and messed up, when you bend it, it'll put an impression in your, in your panel. An apron break is just a straight apron. This, this isn't removable. And it is just for straight bends. Let's see how close we are there. Real close, real close, real close. If you remember, we've got to put an arc in it to match this here two inch rise. Um, these are the Urco kick shrinkers. These are pretty much the industry standard. Um, the Urco kick shrinker was probably the first one on the market starting probably in the late 30s, early 40s. It was mainly the aircraft industry. This machine here is set, has shrink jaws in it. And I'm fortunate enough to have two and this one has stretch jaws in it so I don't have to change the jaws guy that worked for um, Urco back in the day, his name was Marchant, and then he went off and did his own version of kick shrinker with better improvements. One of them was the adjustable wheel where you could raise and lower the gap in your jaws, where this machine, it's set. If you remember on the Bailey machine, the big yellow one, we had that knob there, you could raise it and lower it. That way we could get a different material thickness. So that's a really bitching feature. The reason I have two machines is changing from one set of jaws to the other set of jaws is a total pain in the ass. But the early ones, they have these drive pins that hold these blocks onto the machine. It's a true pain in the ass to change these dies. If you're doing something, you need to switch. First pass, kind of get everything going. Okay, so here we go, we got it kicked. Fits nice. So as you can see, it, it's rocking. So uh, now we're gonna use the linear stretch die and the power hammer. This is my linear stretch die, it has a contact patch like that. Just like on the Bailey. Got this contact patch here. It only hits in the straight line linear fashion this is the same way here i'm going to keep the top die perfectly flat because i'm just trying to get a little bit of stretch not much the disadvantage of the yoder as far as changing tooling on the, on the uh bailey this just has a pin goes in holds it in the tool post piece of cake change it two seconds the yoder we've got these crazy wedges that get hammered in here to hold this thing tight it's archaic as hell and a pain in the ass and that crams it in there and holds it in place. So I'm gonna adjust my throw in to soften up my hits.
Booyah, there we go. Nice and flat. Check our arc. The arc looks great. Our angle looks good. This piece is ready for the uh, pole max. We'll run our bead through here. And that'll be part of our door top. Okay, so this machine here is the myth, the legend, the mighty pull max machine. This uh, particular pull max is a P6. It has a three quarter inch tooling shank here or 19 millimeter. Bitchin' machine. This one's a 1977. It was purchased new by the Halliburton Company in 1977 for a cost of $6,982.59. So this machine is just a reciprocating machine up and down, up and down. We're gonna use the same exact tooling that we used in the Bailey machine. A top die goes in, tighten this collet here, and the, the collets are tightened with a spanner wrench. And then the bottom die holder drops in, slides in, and you can adjust the height of your tooling right here off the bottom screw. There's a screw here on the side. It's a cam that pushes your uh, tool holder in or out so you can center your dies. And obviously the other advantage of this machine is it's D-Road. We're kind of set up here. So I'm gonna lock my bottom tool holder in place with my handy dandy crescent wrench. So here's our finished part, as you can see. Turned out really nice, just like what we wanted, just like on the Bailey. Um, the time difference to make this using the Bailey equipment, the only place it sped up time was on the linear stretch on the Yoder because it, this thing hits so much harder and it stretches so much faster. Other than that, the pull max, same speed, put the bead in, didn't take any more or less time. The brake, same, same amount of time. The only speed was in the Yoder because it just, it just karate chops this metal. So, you know, we're in about the same amount of time there, so. Mm -hmm. 